morning. He's worthy to be praised. Amen. Let's lift him up. Let's lift him up this morning because we want to praise him, right? He's so worthy to be praised. He is so worthy to be praised. So we just want to praise you this morning, Lord. Just want to praise you this morning. Amen.
He's able. He's able. He's gonna do it. He's able. You just believe. He's able. He can do it. He's able. He's able. He's able. I tried him. He's able. He's able. He's able. Do you believe? He's able. He's able. He's able. of 133, leaning on the everlasting arms. Amen. But that's what we're doing this morning.
our holy and righteous God. You are our Alpha and our Maker. You are the beginning and the end. God, you are our Savior. Lord, you are our healer. Lord, you are our keeper. You are our deliverer, God. God, and we come before you this morning, God, just to say thank you, hallelujah, for being God and God all by yourself, God. God, we need you right now, God. We can't breathe without you, Lord. God, we thank you for allowing your presence to come into this house. One God, we lift up holy hands. God, we lift our ears. We lift our hearts, God, to hear whatever you have to say to us this day, God. God, you get the glory out of everything we say and everything we do, God. God, we thank you, Lord, for the people here, God, at St. Stephen, God, those that are worshiping you with us in our virtual sanctuary. God, meet the need of your people, God. God, we thank you for our pastor and our first family, God. God, continue to strengthen him and the entire family. Strengthen all of us right now, God. We need you. God, and we just want to say we love you, God. God, we ask that you anoint the praise team, anoint the musician, the ushers, God. God, anoint the woman of God for the word that he's going to bring through her, God. Strengthen right now, God. God, we need you, Lord. God, we ask that you bless each and every one, God, right now, Lord. God, and get the glory out of everything, Lord. Get the glory, God. And we just want to say thank you, Lord, for everything that you've done, everything that you are doing, God, and everything that you are going to do. Through your son Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Our scripture reading comes from Romans 8, 1 through 9. Romans 8, 1 through 9. Romans 8, 1 through 9. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh on account of sin. He condemned sin in the flesh that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh but according to the spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace, because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God, but you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If indeed the spirit of God dwells in you, now if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he is not his. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his magnificent word. We will now have our announcements. Good morning. We would like for you to please tag, like, and share our Facebook worship service this morning. 
Our intercessory prayer is every Tuesday morning at 8 a.m. via conference call, and our Word Lovers Bible study is every Wednesday via Zoom at 7 o'clock p.m. Children's Church is today. Hallelujah for the fields. Amen. <laughs> Children's Church is today. Sister Tracy Green, Chairperson of Health and Welfare, would like to thank all of those who attended the Will and Testament function on yesterday. It was very informative and appreciated. Special thanks to Attorney Adrian Dukes of Parker Poe Law Firm. He's also the nephew of Ms. Tracy Green, but he did an awesome job, a lot to be proud of. We omitted this announcement during the summer, and I take full responsibility for it, but it's never too late to honor and recognize our very own, our children. Congratulations to Master Jordan Haskell, who graduated May 24th of 2023 as the class Victorian of his school during the, I'm sorry, valedictorian. <laughs> What did I say? <laughs> valedictorian. <laughs> uh, class valedictorian. And this is the son of Jasmine Hallman, who used to be Jasmine Turk Band. So he's the grandson of Ms. Lethean Turk Band and the family of the Turk Bands. But we are proud to say that he is currently at UNC Chapel Hill on a full ride. <laughs> so that's worth the wait. Amen. That's worth the wait. Congratulations to Mr. Master Jordan Haskell. Also, our congratulations go out to Miss London Green. Stand up, Miss London. Oh, she's smiling this morning. <laughs> she was elected SGA president of Felton Laboratory Charter School for the school year of 23-24. And she will be in the homecoming parade for South Carolina State University this coming Saturday. Congratulations to our very own. I tell Sister Cynthia, they're quiet on the inside. Amen. She got those votes, right? Amen. The United Women in Faith is soliciting the support of the membership to contribute to World Thank Offerings by bringing your loose coins on the first second and third Sundays in November. There will be a basket marked specifically for your coins and we are thanking you in advance for your cooperation in this effort. This is coming from Sister Joanne Abram and the United Women in Faith. St. Stephen Church family, our giving season is upon us. Outreach is in the process of planning our annual ham and turkey giveaway. But this year, we will be partnering with a nonprofit profit organization called Everybody Eats. Specifics are being finalized and everything will be shared next Sunday. Our recommendation and our um, responsibilities are still the same, but we will be partnering with a nonprofit organization that will allow us to provide more to our families than in the past. So we are looking forward to this and more information will be forthcoming on next Sunday. This is coming from Brother Michael Jarvis, Chairperson of Outreach. Please keep our sick and shut-in members in your prayers and all families who are going through bereavement. Um, please keep the Duncan family and the Field families for your prayer for the recent loss of Mr. Herman Duncan. As you all know, Mr. Herman Duncan is Martha Fields. That was her brother. So we're asking everyone to please keep them in their, your prayers because they are still grieving as well. On behalf of the entire Sistrump family, we want to thank you all for your acts of kindness and support during our time of bereavement. We also want to express our gratitude for utilizing St. Stephen's United Methodist Church for our loved one, Mr. Leon Sistrump Sr., homecoming, homegoing. Please keep our mother, Ms. Judy Sistrump, and our entire family in your prayers. Continuously, continuously pray. This is coming sincerely from the Sistrunk family. And we also now we have some remarks from Sister Joanne Abram.
morning. Oh, this is kind of hard for me. When I pull up on the church line, I miss my brother, Blue Truck. But I just want to take a moment to say thank you. St. Stephen, you all really did show up, and you showed out. This is the kind of thing that Leon often speak of, unity, coming together, working together. This is what I saw. This is what I saw during the home garden service of my brother and the whole time. And I want to personally thank you. I saw the ushers. I saw the food committee, hospitality. I saw the United Women in Faith and the women of the church. I saw the male callers. I saw the women's choir. Coming together, I saw St. Stephen working as a church should work. There was no one anything. Everybody came together. And that's what church is all about, working together. No you, no me, no us. We are. We make up the body of Christ. You did a beautiful job. And I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. And I have to thank Reverend Carter in his absence. Whatever we wanted him to do, this is all about your head. Go ahead on. I'm with you. And I want to thank Sister Carter. On last Sunday, she sat the stage. At the end of the service, almost, she said, ask Reverend Carter, could she say something? And what she said when I saw it Sunday afternoon, I said, thank you. St. Stephen is a small church compared to the crowd that we knew would be coming. But it's just like she said. This is what Leon wanted. This is what Leon wanted, and I thank you all so much. I love you all, and I, I'm just praying and asking that you continue to do what I saw last week. Come together. Forget about your differences. We are all serving one God. If we come together, thank you, Jesus said, there's nothing you can't do. I saw it. Even when we went down to the repast, hospitality was there working just like they were home. And ladies, gentlemen, you all, thank you so much. I love you all dearly. And continue to pray for the family. But I'm requesting prayer for me. I'm being a little selfish because I know what I'm feeling. I know how I feel. And I know when I walk through those doors on Sunday what I'm going to miss. But trust me, I know God is able. I know God is able. And I'm blessed because I have a praying man right here. I have a praying man right here. And when he prays, things happen. So I love you all. Continue to do what you're doing. Always remember, we love you. Thank you. It is now time for our tithes and offerings. 
you have your envelope, please locate it at this time. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be able to give back to you. Heavenly Father, this offering is and tithes are only for you, dear Lord, not for us, but you, dear Lord. Thank you for blessing us on this day. For Heavenly Father, there are many in this world who have nothing to give. But for those of us who can give, let us give with loving hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It is now time for our children's church. Here in the back. Praise the Lord, everybody. I said, praise the Lord, everybody. I didn't say praise Angie. I praise the praise team. I said, praise the Lord, everybody. God is really good to us. And we don't need to take that for granted. And I'm just going to take just a minute because Sister Abram reminded me of something. And me and Lorraine was talking about that. A lot of times when you lose somebody, People say, I lost somebody, and we feel that, but nobody really goes into the detail of the pain, the pain that you feel, even as a Christian. You know, so I was talking to Lorraine about sometimes just coming on the church ground, the place that I love, it's hard for me. So I just want to encourage anybody that's going through something that God is able, as Brother Joseph said, and that if you today... No matter what comes your way, you're going all the way with Jesus. You're going all the way with Jesus. Put the devil on notice right now. I'm going all the way. Hallelujah. This is our first time singing this song, so y'all know I am. They know. Catch me when you can. Praise the Lord. Let's give God some praise. Clap your hands. 
to go to Children's Church. for the hour, Evangelist Sharon Staley. We all know her as a praising woman. We know her as a praying woman. And we also know her as a preaching woman. She loves her family dearly. And we can appreciate her love not only for her immediate family, but for the church family. She shows her love in everything that she does in this church. And so without further ado, Evangelist Staley will introduce herself through the preached word. <laughs> the glory. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Thank you, Lord. Give an honor to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To Reverend Nichols, thank you. To Pastor Carter, Lady Carter, in their absence. Reverend Abram, Lady Abram, Minister Clement, my dear sister Cynthia, and my husband, definitely not the least, but I thank God for you. Amen. Hallelujah. God is good, y'all. He is good. 
is good. We're going to go straight into the word. Y'all pray for me, amen. Pray for me, amen. We'll be coming from Ezekiel, the third chapter, verses 17 through 19. Ezekiel, the third chapter, 17 through 19. And it read, Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth and give them warnings from me. When I say unto the wicked, Thou shalt surely die, and thou giveth him not warning, nor speaketh to warn the wicked from his wicked ways, to save his life, and the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity. But his blood will I require at thy hand. Yet if thou warn the wicked, and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked ways, he shall die in his iniquity. But thou hast delivered my soul. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day again. God, we thank you for just how you have blessed, blessed us thus far. God, let the words of my mouth be a meditation of my heart. God, let it be acceptable in thy sight, God. God, open our eyes and our ears, God, to hear you and only you, God. And we give your name the glory through your son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. If I were used for a topic, it would be, it's a warning. And warning comes before destruction. It's a warning. Warning comes before destruction. This passage of scripture is about Ezekiel giving a warning from God to the Israelites, Gentiles, of the consequences of continuing in their sin. Let me give you a little history about Ezekiel. Ezekiel was one of the major Hebrew prophets and a biblical visionary in the Old Testament who received his prophetic call at the age of 30. Ezekiel's prophetic writings and teachings came from God through visions. Ezekiel had to warn the leaders, the people, of consequences if they did not repent, that they would die in their sins, but if he saved them by, he could save them if they, by telling them what thus said the Lord. He told them, declare your sovereign Lord, repent, turn away from your sin, and then your sin will not be a downfall, and get a new heart and a new spirit. In other words, he was telling the people, as God is telling us, confess, as in Romans 10 and 19, confess with your mouth, Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, then you shall be saved. If not, you will be in danger of going to hell. Tell your neighbor, that's the warning. Amen? That's a warning. We must repent. But do you think the Israelites listened at that time? No, they did not. Because in Ezekiel, the 33rd chapter, Ezekiel said again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Speak to the people. As a watchman, you will see the enemy coming, and he'll sound the alarm to warn the people. Then if those people hear the alarm and refuse to take action, meaning to repent, then it will be their fault and not yours, and you will die. They will die. They heard the alarm, but they ignored it. So the responsibility is theirs. Tell your neighbor, it's a warning. It's a warning. Hallelujah. And warning comes before destruction. God is saying to all, their right, all the righteous 
if you, even though we do right, if we don't repent and ask God to clean our hearts and come in and save us, all the right we're doing is going to be forgotten. Because, you know, we cannot make it into heaven just by doing right. We got to repent of our sins. We got to be saved. We got to be born again. And I know God gave me a mandate uh, about three or four years ago. And I have to do what God called me to do. He, gave, he told me every time that I was given the opportunity through him to speak on salvation. Because people need to know that we cannot make it into heaven just by what we do. We can't make it into heaven just by how we treat people. We can't make it into heaven just by our finances. We can't make it into heaven just by coming to church. It has to be a change. We have to repent. We have to be born again. And that's through Jesus Christ. That's the only way. That's the only way. Our gifts will make room for us, mm. but our gifts can't save us. We all have gifts and talents, but they can't save us. Warnings are given. When warnings are given, it comes with instructions on what to do and what not to do to avoid disaster or destruction. When we get warnings, just for example, anybody ever been speed? <laughs> Me. And you get a warning. He gave you this blue paper, and he said, I need you to slow down. Don't speed no more. That's an earthly warning. Soon as you get back on the road, you're speeding. <laughs> And we speed, and we speed, and we speed until we get pulled over again. Maybe not the same officer, but then guess what happened? You're going to get a ticket. You know? So we got to be careful. We warn our children because we endure some stuff in life. We will warn them and tell them, if you do this, if you do that, this could happen. And you pray for them, and they still do this and that. You know, they figure we as, as parents are older, they, they say we old-fashioned. My kids even tell, ma, ma, ma. But I be saying, look, we done went through some stuff. We know a little more. We trying to help you to avoid going through some of the things you don't have to go through if you will only listen. Those are warnings. God warns us. Warning to me is a gift from God because he's been warning us from the very beginning. In the time of Genesis, chapter 2 and 3, we all know the story. God planted a beautiful garden and formed the perfect man named Adam. And Adam, and gave Adam a perfect woman, and Adam named her Eve. God given them every tree and made it perfect and pleasant in sight. But one, he told them, do not eat of. The good and the evil tree. He told them, if you eat of it, you will surely die. That was the tree of knowledge. That was a warning. He told them, if you eat of this tree, you will surely die, and the dying will be the destruction, y'all. Warning comes before destruction. So here, there's a serpent. The Bible said it was the most subtle of the beasts of the field, meaning he was cunning, he was treacherous, he was deceitful, he was slick, he was in, say, in, uh, crafty, he was skilled in his manipulation. He used an indirect method to achieve deception. To Eve. Why do I think that? Because 
Adam was over all the creatures. God gave him dominion over everything. Why did a serpent go to Eve first? That was deceitful. Because you know why? Because God told Adam. So he figured he going to be deceitful and conniving and he goes to Eve. But the thing about it, Eve told him the truth. She told him, yeah, we can eat up all of them, but not that one. But then she goes and she get the fruit anyway. And she eat it. And then she offered to Adam. And then Adam ate it. What? That was crazy to me. But then again, we all know that's how man became the first fall for man. Mm, 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 mm. I don't whip far enough. <laughs> The results of them taking, not taking the heed of the warning and to be disobedient from God himself caused Adam to work hard the rest of his life. They no longer had access to the garden of life. They were banned. Eve would suffer greatly with pain during childbirth. And the serpent was no longer walking. He was no longer walking because God cursed him and laid him prostrate on his belly and told him he would eat dust the rest of his life. Tell your neighbor, it's a warning. Another warning was Noah. He warned the people in Genesis 6 and 7 who was wicked and evil as well. If they didn't repent, they will be destroyed by the flood. They didn't believe him, of course. They kept right on doing what they normally do, thinking we have time. That happened. What happened? The flood came and then destruction. The earth was destroyed and only Noah, his family, and one male and one female of every creature was saved. And I told the Lord, I said, Lord, you could have kept the snake. <laughs> You could have kept the rats, the bugs, and the roaches, <laughs> even the mosquitoes. <laughs> but they all have a purpose, just like we do. Amen? As much as God loves us, he loves them. <laughs> God loves us, but God's wrath is real. And his wrath comes when we disobey him. That was just two of the warnings in the Old Testament. In the New Testament, Apostle Paul, Apostle Paul warned the Philippians in the third chapter to be aware of dogs, be aware of evildoers, evil workers, and be aware of consensions, meaning those who always cause in division, always cause in confusion, always separating, always scheming. He warns believers of those kinds of people, particularly those who try to justify our wrongdoings, making excuses to continue why we do what we do, why we stay in sin. And, you know, the one we often use, uh, we all fall short. We all fall, yes we do, but that's not an excuse. We all fall short, but God also said, be ye holy, for I am holy. He also tells us we must repent. All the gossiping and the lying, the backbiting, causing confusions in your job, on your job, in the church, in your home. Everywhere you go, there are people that the enemy uses to do that on a daily basis, y'all. That's his assignment to them, and they don't realize it. And they continue to do it, and that's, what, that's the way I am. No, that's not. That might be the way you are, 
But God wants to change that. You don't have to stay that way. You shouldn't want to be that way. You know, I run from people like that. I do. I literally run. I speak to them. But I'm going the other direction. I don't have time for it. I'm striving every day. Every day to see God's face. And that's what we all should be doing. Two things I don't play with, and that's God. I don't play with God. I don't play with my family. You know, some people say, well, I don't play about my money. Y'all, money ain't going to get us there. God is the only one who can get us there through Jesus, and God is the only one that can save our families, our loved ones, keep us united, keep us together. Like Sister Abram said, the unity has to be. We can't make it without coming together, being on one accord. Amen? Scripture, Matthew 6 and 24 says, No man can serve two masters. Either you're going to hate one and love one, either you're going to be devoted to one, or you're going to despise the other. We can't serve two gods. We're going to have to love the Lord. I love the Lord with all my heart, my mind, my soul. And we all make mistakes. Yes, we do. But when I make a mistake, y'all, I, when I tell you I beat myself up praying and asking God for forgiveness because I don't want to close my eyes one day after all that been said and done and wake up in hell. A wake up, God telling me, depart from me. Regardless of what you said, what you've done, you ain't going to make it. I don't have time for it. And I hope you all don't either. Revelation 22, verses 18 and 19. I'm going to read that one. I'm going to read that one to you. This one here. It read, For I testify unto every man that heareth the word of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plague that is written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the word of the book of this prophecy, the Holy Bible, God shall take away his part out of the no, God should take away his part out of the Bible of life and out of the holy city and from the things which was written. What God is saying, we can't add on to the word. We can't take from the word. Y'all, this is the final book, the final chapter, and the final warning. And we know that a lot is being added. A lot is being taken out. Because we want to justify what we think should be done in the house of the Lord. We can't compromise with the world. We can't compromise with the people coming in. Yeah, we greet them, we love them, but we cannot compromise with the people to try to make them be a part of the house of God. If anything, we want to make them be in the kingdom of God. So it's our job to teach everybody, to help everybody, to tell them what we have to do in order to see God. And that's our job. God is going to hold all of us accountable because we all are assigned to somebody or some people. And we can't be afraid to tell them that you are doing wrong and you must be born again and, and not be hesitant about it. And I know we, there are some people that I know the reason why they can't do it because we're not doing what we're supposed to do. It would be easy. It is, should be easy to go to women and men, boys and girls, and tell them, you know what, in a nice way, what you're doing ain't right. Because God going to hold us accountable if we know they ain't doing right and we just sit back and let them do it. Oh, it ain't me. That's them. 
I have a great concern about that because I feel that if you love me like you say you love me and you see me in error, you're going to correct me. You're going to correct me. You're going to pull me to the side and you're going to say, Sharon, I don't think, or Sharon, this is what. And what I do, I don't even think no more. I give them the word. We got to give them the word and show them where God said thou should not, when God said it shall be. We got to do it. We got to do it. God is warning us. He has warned us. Our job is to go out and compel men and women to come to God. Not necessary, St. Stephen. I witness the people every day. I know God placed me on the job that I am for this purpose. I know he have, I have people to stand up and talk to me. Sometimes I have to realize where I'm at. I'm on a job. People are dying, y'all, because they don't know. They are dying spiritually because nobody takes the time to tell them to help them. And we come to the four walls every Sunday. Every Sunday. But that's not good enough. We got to go out the four walls. We got to go out and we just can't do it once or twice a year. We got to make it our daily walk. When last you witnessed to somebody? When last you told them about how good Jesus is, really? When last you took the time to just tell somebody how you got, how God delivered you? And you're not ashamed anymore. God is going to hold us accountable for everything that we should do and don't do. Everything that we should do and don't do. He's going to hold us accountable. We're going to have to stand before him, and he's going to ask us. And I'm not talking about things. I'm talking about spiritual stuff that we're supposed to be doing spiritually to help bring someone into the kingdom of God. He loves all of us. He do not want none of us to die and perish. He wants all of us to live eternity with him. And just like you want to go to heaven, help somebody else along the way. Help somebody along the way. Tell them what God wants them to do in order to reach heaven. And that's simply Romans 10 and 9. Confessing. Repenting and turning from our wicked ways. And God will come into their house, in their heart, and he'll change their heart, and he will change their spirit. And if they never join a church, it'll be okay. Because everybody ain't coming to church. Everybody ain't coming to church because of what they see us as church people do. And I've had people to tell me that. I ain't coming to church. I used to come to church, but this and that happened. Or this and this and that says this. But then we got to show them. And I often tell people, I say, you don't come to church nowhere from God, for, for people. You coming for God. But everybody is not there yet, though. Everybody is not there. They feel when they come into the house of the Lord, they, how they're supposed to be greeted by the tree people because we are the light. So if our light is not shining bright for them to want to come, then it's us. Let's be truthful about it. If your light ain't shining brightly for people to want to come to church, then it's not them, it's us. And you, who you think God is going to hold accountable? Us. Because we are the one that has said we have confessed. The ones out in the world, they're out in the world. But we are the one that comes to this church every Sunday, be on Bible study, Tuesday night prayer. We are the ones that say we have made a confession and we have returned, repent, and we have turned from our wicked ways. So let the light shine. 
So others will want to come to church. Others will want to be on Bible study. Others will want to be in prayer. And that's how the church grow. That's how the church grow when God add to it. But he do it through us because he uses us. God is warning us, y'all. I'm telling you, God is on his way back. God is on his way back. We do not have time to play church. And I've been hearing that since I've been a little girl. But if you take the time to read your Bible, especially Revelation, you will see the signs unfolding every day. Not to make us fearful, but for us to get ready. He said he's coming like a thief in the night. He's coming. No man know the hour, nor the day he shall appear, but he's truly coming. That's a warning. Let's get it right. If there's anybody that has harmed you or hurt you, they may not know it. If you feel that they have, go to them and talk it out. Nobody have to know but you and him, her and him, her and whoever. But talk it out. People are dying and they're dying not knowing God. They're dying and they're thinking. People are thinking they know God. Because they come to church. Because they come to church. Don't you know the devil sit up in church with us? The devil sits right in church with us. He hearing everything. His taxes never change. He always did that. So coming to church is not it. Singing on the choir, not it. Being an usher, not it. Speaking in tongues, not it. Praising God, not it. We got to make sure we get into heaven. And by doing that, we got to confess. We got to repent. I repent every day, y'all. Sin of omission, sin of commission. Because sometimes I can offend somebody. I offend my husband sometimes and I go on to work. You know, we all do it. But you got to repent. We got to repent. And I told God, I said, every opportunity I get, people will tell you, Jeff will tell you, my kids will tell you. I spoke other places. That's my message. And it ain't going to change until God tell me to change it. We have to stand up and stand for righteous. We can't compromise. We can't add on. We can't take out. If God said it shall not be, it shall not be. We can't compromise for the world. And y'all know what I'm talking about right about now. We can't compromise for the world. As believers, we got to stand for holiness. If God said he against it, he is against it. If he said he's for it, he's for it. And we should be the same way. If we believe in God and not that we judging people, we still have to love everybody because God loves everybody. But we have to also stand up and tell them it's an abomination. God hates when we lie. He said a lie will not tarry. You know, we ain't going to make it if we lying to each other and telling them it's okay to do what you do. No, it's not. It's not okay. It's not okay if they're doing what the word tells us it's not. shouldn't be. It's in a warning. And I want all of us to take heed to the warning. 
We just left, left lost Brother Leon. We didn't have a warning. Sister um, Abram said she, she wished she, he would have told her. So that's how God is going to come back for all of us. Not everybody gets sick and die. My mom was telling me just the other day, and I'm, I'm finished, uh, a young man out where my, my hometown, him and his wife was in church. They were singing, and he said um, he wanted to stand up. He wanted to sing a song. He stood up, walking towards the front to sing a song. He didn't make it, y'all. He dropped dead in the church. And biblical, that happened in old days. Read your word. He dropped dead, walking up to the, the podium to, to sing a song. So we don't have time. We don't have time to play around. Tomorrow is not promised to none of us. We could leave this church and never make it to our destination. And it's not for fear. Please don't be fear, because God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a love, power, and a sound mind. But he wants us to be ready whenever he comes. He wants us to be ready. I hope I said something to encourage you, make you think, make you get a closer walk with the Lord. Make you compare, be compelled to go out and help someone else. Don't be afraid to tell your sisters and your brothers, your cousins, your aunts, your uncle, even your mother and father, that it's right to do right and it's wrong to do wrong. Tell them it's just a warning from the Lord and warning does come before destruction. God bless you and have a great evening. Staley delivered a message. You know, we don't like to pay attention to warnings, but we do receive warnings. Read your Bible. The warnings are throughout that Bible. If you're not reading your Bible, then you don't know what the warning is. So make sure you know what those warnings are. Look around. They're everywhere. But are we heeding those warnings? Some may be saying, how do I know it's a warning? The Holy Spirit tells you. The Holy Spirit communicates with you. The Holy Spirit lets you know when you're about to do wrong. The Holy Spirit lets you know when you're going someplace you don't need to go. Now, the Holy Spirit also lets you know when you're getting ready to say something that you shouldn't say. Too many of us dismiss those warnings. You know, we bring, we bring trouble on ourselves. Ourselves. Because we don't heed. We don't pay attention to what God is telling us. So, as... Evangelist Stanley preached this morning. Take heed. Look around. Many were here last year. Not here today. You may think you have plenty of time. You know, young people think that way. They say, I'm young, I have plenty of time but more young people leave, are leaving this world 
so much violence so much violence I hate to even read the paper almost every day somebody's shooting somebody now that's an evil spirit evil and we have to pray evil out and sometimes you know that old evil spirit tries to enter our church yes it does we need to heal it everything that looks good sounds good acts good may not be good take heed listen to the spirit now is the time for prayer and we select this time to pray but you know what you should be praying all of the time from the time you wake up in the morning the first thing I say is thank you Lord for waking me up that's the first thing I say because he does not have to wake us up. Pray without ceasing. Pray for your friends, your neighbors. Pray for this church. Pray for it. If anyone would like to come to the altar, you're welcome to come at this time, or you may remain seated. Prayer happens everywhere whether it's at the altar, in the pew, or at the back door, everywhere, God listens to our prayers. He listens if we line up in the bed and praying, and I do a lot of that. I just lie up in the bed and pray. Before I get out of the bed, I've said several prayers. Throughout the day, you need to pray. God, we love you so much. We appreciate all that you do for us. Heavenly Father, if it were not for you, we wouldn't know where to be. We wouldn't know how to be there. But Lord, God, our steps, God, our thoughts, and the things that we speak. Heavenly Father, let everything that we say and do is for the good of others. Help us, Father, to lift up and not tear down. Heavenly Father, help us to draw closer to you so that you, we will know when you're speaking to us, that we will heed the warnings that you give to us. Help us, Lord, to not only be a Christian, but to help somebody else to know what it is to serve the Lord. Help somebody else know how to be saved. Heavenly Father, there are so many traveling up and down the, this north road, day in and day out. And I do believe that somebody is passing this church right now who needs to know that you are Lord of Lords. Help us, Lord Jesus, as we go into our communities. Dear Lord, we encounter so many different kinds of people, so many different spirits. Heavenly Father, let our light shine in the midst 
of all that may be happening in this world. Help us, Lord, to stand. Stand, stand, stand on the truth of your word. Help us, Lord, to not only stand on your word, but to show somebody else how to stand on your word. For your word is true, and we cannot go wrong by studying your word. Help us, Lord, to increase in knowledge. Heavenly Father, we don't know everything that we need to know, but help us, Lord, to continue to strive to study and to learn and to receive the spirit that you've given to us. Heavenly Father, help us not to quench the spirit. For you gave that spirit to us when you left this earth. And you said that you were going to send us a helper. Lord, help us to use the helper. Help us, Lord. We just need all kinds of help, dear Lord. Even though we strive to do the best that we can, we still need your help. I pray help, help, help for everyone on this day. You can't stand alone. You can't do it alone. You need Jesus. You need Jesus. You need Jesus. And all you have to do is to say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And that's all you need to say. You don't need a lot of fancy words. Just call on his name. And everything will be all right. It'll be all right. Heavenly Father, we continue to pray for our grieving families. Heavenly Father, we just ask you to encourage them, strengthen them, know that you are their peace, and to just call on Jesus. Heavenly Father, we thank you for giving us each other on this day. Heavenly Father, we pray that we will serve our purpose. We will do what you've given us to do. And dear Lord, help us to remember that we don't all receive the same thing to do. Help us, Lord, to only do what you said do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Visitors, where? Raise your hand. Amen. Amen. Would you like to greet us? You know that's that's those are good words. They are glad to be here this morning. So that tells us that the spirit of the Lord is in this house. I always like to hear someone say, I'm glad to be here. All right, he was raised in this church. 
Amen. Welcome back home. Amen. There is no place like home. I don't care how far you go. And I was glad to come back to St. Stephen. <laughs> and I'm still glad I'm in St. Stephen. Amen, amen. We're going to ask Evangelist Staley to give us the benediction. She said, no, so. Oh, the children, all right. Let's bring the children back in. And I thank you for being the church that you are. Pastor can leave, and we still have church. We know what to do. We know how to do it. So that leads me to believe that we've been taught and we've learned some things. So we continue to pray for our pastor and first lady in their absence. They must have had a good lesson back there today. They don't want to come back. All right. Oh, yeah, they thought they had time. <laughs> they going on past the car this time. <laughs> Come on, little children. You're getting out early today. that announcement are they going to join us well I believe they can hear us from back there don't you think all right let us let us stand in a threefold amen <laughs> Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 